Uh, all right. So um, one of the things I always hear lots and, and from clients who come to us needing more traffic for business are, I need a new website. And um, the truth is most of the time, they really don't. Um, and statistically, the numbers for, for a typical website is that for every 100 people that come to your website, you'll be able to convert one. So they, a, a regular website has a 1% conversion rate. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, and I'm gonna cover a couple other things about websites. Um, most of the websites are built like brochures. So it's page after page after page and they all kind of link together. Um, but we don't, from our perspective, we don't necessarily just want people to come out and look at the website and read it and leave. We want them to do something. And by do something, that would either be, we want them to click on the page. We want to, them to either subscribe or opt into something, or we want to generate a call. And if there is a chance for an online purchase, we want to give them the ability to actually give us money. Um, and simply because a customer is far more valuable than a prospect. So just before I jumped on with Ted, I went on Google and I typed in uh, air conditioner repair near me. And I, uh, I hit enter and I got these different ads that come up. Um, this top one I find really funny because if you look carefully, it says Fort Myers, which is Florida. So they are paying to have an ad shown in Calgary, Alberta. Um, just really, really bad setup on their ad page. Um, like th this should never happen. So, um, you know, anyone outside of the immediate uh, Fort Myers area should be excluded. So this ad never showed. So, so I clicked a couple, I clicked this Comfort Air one, the top one. And that was here and I'm going air conditioner repair near me and I, I'm on an about us page that really doesn't talk anything about what I typed in. So there, there's a real incongruence here between what I'm trying to find and uh, what they are showing me. Uh, because the first thing I'm looking at this image and I'm thinking these guys do commercial air conditioning and not residential. So I'm completely on the wrong page yet they paid for me probably in HVAC, I would guess somewhere between four and $6 for me to come to this page and find out this is not the company I want. So that, that search right there was a complete waste for them. So they just took five bucks and just literally put a match to it because that was a waste. The second one down is uh, this one here, or well, be the third, because I'm not gonna count the floor again. So this is Action Furnace, I click on theirs and I click on air conditioner repair to me. Okay, well, it's got air conditioner repair, request a quote. Okay, so that's good. It's got some phone numbers, although two of them uh, I wouldn't doubt because I'm in neither Edmonton nor Red Deer. The biggest problem with this page is that this is not an actual landing. It's got all kinds of stuff on it and I can wander around and I can find out stuff down here and I can go back up to the top and I can find out about furnaces and hot water heaters and air conditioning. So this page, this page will have a, a less than stellar conversion rate. So in a nutshell, most websites end up looking, here's how they work. So you, you have a whole assortment of media that you're gonna use to drive traffic to your site. So that could be AdWords or showing up at an online meeting, business cards, blog posts, all kinds of stuff. Collectively, this is all media. So when somebody says they do Facebook marketing, um, that's actually a misnomer. There is no such thing as Facebook marketing. Facebook is a media, no different than radio or an imprinted pen, and it needs to be treated the same way. Um, typically, everything drives to a homepage, and then you'll have links to other pages. Sometimes you'll have sub pages off one. For example, if they have like product or practice areas, they'll have a list of different ones. And again, your only option is normally to call in or fill out a form and that's it. So there's a huge amount of waste in this setup on a regular website because you can follow any of these areas and go all over the place. 
we like to take a different approach and that is to, and I can't move, so, is to use an optimized landing page. And depending on what you type in, the landing page, oh, that's good, I just poured water on my keyboard. Um, the landing page only has one function and that is, in this case, uh, and I'm gonna just blow this one up. So this one happens to be uh, a template for emergency dental. And all we wanna do here, the first thing we, we've on, on, and especially on um, any business that has to get fairly intimate with their patient or client, um, some sort of COVID-19 disclaimer at the top that will tell, um, you know, in this case for a dentist, it's if you're gonna put my fingers or your fingers in my mouth, I wanna know that you're not gonna infect me. So that needs to be at the top. And then this one, because this one is for emergency dental, it'll say, well, come back. It'll say emergency dental, call the number, uh, call the number, uh, fill out the form to get an appointment, call the number, call the number, call the number, or fill out the form. And then just their basic info, like their address, who they are, and their numbers. There is no navigation off this page. So they cannot get to the dental site anywhere off this page with one exception and that being um, thanks to Google and Facebook's onerous policies, you do have to have a privacy policy link at the bottom, which would be on your website. Um, but you generally will put that in like two point invisible type so that it's there to be compliant, but you don't actually want them to, uh, to go there if you can help it. Um, structure wise, I'm just gonna switch pages here. This is a, uh, a template for personal injury. Uh, again, phone number, get or sign up for a free consult. Uh, a listing of, of how we would uh, uh, become the best personal injury attorney for you. Uh, some examples of cases and relationships, what makes you different, and this is all directly related to personal injury, uh, again, a call to action, give us a call, and some testimonials and um, some uh, trust devices at the bottom, and again, the same call to action, either call or fill out the form, and then there's a map, and that's it. Now, the, the question always comes, if you've paid Google Ads to drive someone to this page, and some niches are really affordable, um, we have a, uh, a dumpster bin company in Winnipeg. Their clicks are like two to three bucks. They're pretty cheap. Um, clicks for professional services, lawyers, dentists, uh, physiotherapy, that kind of thing. Um, in big markets, so for example, a dental client we have in Houston, clicks will run in anywhere from 85 to 100 bucks. So if you're working on an average that for every 10 clicks, you're going to get one client, that's anywhere from $850 to $1,000 to acquire a new patient or client. Um, so you have to make sure that these landing pages are converting really, really well. Because again, going back to a regular website, um, this is gonna be about 1%. So in this case, the, that ad would not be affordable. Um, the other thing that's different is when you come back to here is Let's say they come to the landing page, they don't give you the, make their phone call and they don't give you their, um, their contact info. Now that would normally mean that you would have to go back to pay-per-click and pay again to have them come back a second time when they're ready to look again. But if you do this type of thing properly, what you're going to do is if they don't opt in and if they don't call, um, you're going to do two things. First off, when they are getting ready to leave the page, you're going to put a pop-up offer on that will take one more shot at getting their opt-in information. But if they don't do that, now what we're going to do is we're going to put a retargeting pixel on their computer. And that is so that we can come back and they obviously had some level of interest because they clicked on the page. Now what you're going to do with the retargeting pixel is you're either going to show them different ads for things that may be um, maybe a little different uh, for what they're after. So let, let, assuming this is 
um, the dental emergency page and uh, um, I got hit in the mouth with a lacrosse stick and I have a loose tooth, but it's not really bad yet. But I really should do something about it and I'm just putting it off. So now what happens is I can go to um, third party sites like the Weather Network and I know what's going to happen is because I was on Ford's website, I will probably get, no, no, I was on Dell's site too. So you can see here, Dell is now retargeting me because I was, there's one Dell ad, there's another. Uh, I was recently on TD's site because I was looking at insurance. And there's another Dell one there. And this one for LinkedIn, which I'm on all the time because we market with LinkedIn. So what we can do now is your ads can show here instead of having to pay the big fee from Google for pay-per-click, we can now show these ads again. And what we do with these ads is we make five different sets and we rotate them. So in the, for the dentist, the first one might be talking again about the emergency dental, but then it might, we might just change it up and say loose tooth. The third one might say crack tooth. Uh, the fourth one might say, uh, uh, you know, the dangers of leaving a, a loose tooth in your mouth, for, for example. So everything, we're gonna keep showing them, showing them different versions of the same thing, trying to find out what their hot button is to get them to click back and go back. The advantage to this is, I've never seen these ever more than 10% of the original cost. So if you paid $5 for the original click, I've never seen an ad like this be more than 50 cents. So it's a huge saving. And also with these, you're now into the cost of, so you're, you're showing by impressions, so your cost per thousand of impressions. And it is ridiculously cheap, which is why big companies do it, but it's a little bit of a hassle to set up, which is why most small businesses, you know, do not. Um, so that is um, the, what's everything? That is what happens here when you put the pixel on it. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to run uh, retargeting ads. The other thing you can do using retargeting, and most people aren't aware of it, but um, phones are continually transmitting their location, and that data is recorded. So we can also now do. Uh, do what are called hyper-local ads. So if I'm a dentist and, I'm set a, and I've set up a, uh, a new practice, let's say in the Northeast, what I can do is I can put a hyper-local pin on every other dental office in the area and only people who walk into, their, into those offices will see my ads on their phone. So I have the opportunity to uh, uh, take advantage if they have a particularly not great experience at the dental office they're in, I can now come back and say, run an ad that says bad experience uh, at ABC Dental. We have anxiety free dentistry or pain free or whatever it is. And we're only targeting people that are going to a different dentist in the area. Um, if you think of it from a retail perspective, if let's say I'm in a mall, in a shopping mall, and I have a home furniture store and somebody walks in, into my store, wanders around and walks out. Typically that would be, in most cases, a completely lost lead if nobody talked to them or gathered their information. But by using Hyperlocal, what I can do now is they came into my store for some reason. Now I can start showing my ads on their phone for pennies. It's, um, it's, it's what you can do with, with, with retargeting is almost limitless. Um, once you understand the dynamics of it. So it's the same thing for um, if I have a, um, if I have an independent auto repair shop, like, like Franklin, for example, I could put a hyper local pin on every car dealer service department around me and show them my ads instead and say, you know, don't pay, don't pay high dealer prices come to Franklin. So there are a number of different things you can do, but you have to have all the pieces arranged so that they work. So when they click on the ad, the ad has to be um, targeted so that the landing page speaks exactly to that person. It's why when we are doing landing pages, I will. it's not uncommon for us to take a landing page and make nine or 10 copies of that ad and 
each media drives to, although identical pages, a different ad. And that allows us to determine exactly which media are getting us uh, income and which, um, which ads have performed better than the others. And that, that becomes uh, more important as you move through life cycle marketing. So 